Hi, I'm Storm. And I'm Mike. And we are from Advanced Group. What are we talking about today, Storm? Today we are talking about these two different paints that we have. Yep. Um, first we've got a line marking paint yep. and then a spray and mark paint. Yep. So we'll start with this big blue one here. Yep. Um, what is this ideally used for? Okay, so uh, you can use line marking paint for lots of different uh, reasons, um, obviously lines, but mm -hmm. um, uh, this particular one is 500 grams and this is more for a machine. Now, you probably can't see this. I might be even able to put a, uh, a picture up on the video, but there's a, um, there's a four wheel line marking machine which we sell separately that this can go in and um, it has a spe this paint has a special, or well, these sizes have a special nozzle on it. Now, um, most aerosols you can, you would use up the, like upright and um, with the nozzle at the top and they would have a little tube inside the can that picks up the, 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 the products that's inside it from the bottom. Whereas uh, these cans are designed for being used inverted. Now the nozzle will match in with the part in the um, four wheel line marking machine so that um, it would be sort of uh, underneath the machine in a way. This part of the nozzle will be underneath the machine and would be able to spray down onto the ground surface. So whether it's concrete, asphalt or grass, um, this one might not be used as much on grass as concrete and asphalt um, or within a factory if you need, if need be. Um, this is kind of like a do-it-yourself type product. So it's not necessarily um, as good as some other products that are out there. For example, um, if you were at a local shopping center, um, the, the lines that are painted uh, use a different product and that requires a massive machine, which is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Those machines um, you know, can be upwards of $10,000 um, and it's a different paint altogether. It's um, called chlorinated rubber, so don't confuse this with proper line marking paint. This is more of a do-it-yourself thing. Um, you might find that the, um, you'll, you'll get, you won't get the same longevity out of a product like this that you would out of um, uh, the chlorinated rubber. Um, if you had to use your hand, you could with this. However, you'll probably find you'll get a lot on your fingers. Um, the, the nozzles have changed over the years. So I think that the newer cans, this might be an older one, come with a slightly different nozzle. It's a little bit more user-friendly for using your fingers so that you could use it for either the machine or with your fingers. Now, um, obviously you're not gonna do a very straight line with your fingers. You, would, you could do some uh, little dots or something. Um, and um, uh, also it won't be a round dot. This has kind of got like a, um, a little shape in the nozzle. It's kind of makes it so that it's going to do um, a rectangular or, you know, um, a, sh a oval type shape rather than a, um, a round shape. Um, yep. Would you recommend um, if they were doing it with their hands to wear gloves and protect their skin? Is it bad to get it on your... Yeah, um, if that's something that you're concerned about, then you could. Um, some some people's skin is more sensitive than others, mm -hmm. so uh, if you uh, if that is something that you've had a problem with uh, your skin getting affected by by things like this in the past, then I'd definitely recommend wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people might have never had a problem with it. Um, in that case, um, that would be up to the individual to decide. But um, yeah, you know, in general, it's best to use gloves. However, I would find that a glove would probably interfere with the, the paint coming out of it and you possibly get um, paint on the glove uh, if it's, your glove is sort of interfering with it. So Can it's up to you. Can you any yeah. other colors in this? Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if it would be approximately 10 different colors. I'd have to count them, but um, there could be about 10 different colors. So um, I think there's more colors in the spray and mark than in the line marking paint. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is this, this one here like more for hand use? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this one's designed so that um, the nozzle is much further away from the finger and this one is, a, a, the nozzle is a circle. Mm -hmm. So uh, like a little pinhole really, so that um, it's more for little 
you know, spraying little dots on the road or this or that, not necessarily um, a nice line on the ground. Are they um, different paints? Uh, this is the same paint. Is there, the is, same paint? there is another paint that's um, like this one, but superior to this one. Uh, I think it's supposed to last at least two times longer. I don't think it's three. I think it's at least two times longer. Um, and that's an epoxy based version of this. Mm -hmm. And, um, but there's only limited colors in the epoxy version, which is the, uh, the professional, I can't, can't remember if it's called the pro or professional version of this line marking paint, but you can find that on our website sold separately as well. Do you yep. find these dry quickly once you've yep. applied them? Yeah. Yep. So, um, the beauty of these paints is that, uh, depending on how, how much you put on and the weather, whether it's cold or warm, um, if it's well ventilated, etc. Um, these sometimes will tack dry in five minutes. Um, you know, mostly dry within 15 to 30 minutes max. So, um, yeah, you, if you're worried about uh, how long it's going to take to dry, you could always do a test patch somewhere and just test it out before you go ahead and, and use it just to make sure that um, if you need to use the area in a certain period of time afterwards that, um, that it's going to be dry in time. Mm -hmm. yep. And would you like apply this paint um, to the same places that you'd apply this one? Uh, this one uh, gets used a lot by tradesmen who um, they would need to either remember something for themselves or communicate something with another team member. Um, say for example, uh, if there's repairs required on a footpath, um, say the asphalt's you know, having some problems with tree roots or something, um, damaging the asphalt and needing repair, uh, potentially they could go along, they could put a circle around it, they could put an arrow, they could put a number, um, and then um, that, that way they're documenting something without having to use photos or or a notebook or you know measurements or GPS coordinates uh, by, by painting something on the ground surface. Um, they are able to communicate with their team that um, uh, this is something that requires their, their attention or um, future works to be done, etc. cetera. Um, would you find these to be a bit of a hazard at all? Yep, so being an aerosol, um, it's a... Um, flammable uh, gas, I guess. And so um, you'd have to take all the precautions that are required for a, f a flammable uh, aerosol prope propellant, mm -hmm. um, whether that's storage, transportation, um, there's certain requirements that WorkSafe will uh, advise. If you have a, a car or a truck or a van full of these things, then once you meet certain um, levels of flammable or dangerous goods within your vehicle, you have to comply with certain regulations. And those are the sorts of things you should be aware of. Um, most people wouldn't carry a whole truckload or car load full of these around with them. So um, it's not going to be as um, important for people that just have one or two cans. However, if you have multiple boxes of them, um, in the one place, then obviously you should um, be aware of what the regulations are and follow those strictly. Mm -hmm. yep. If it was raining, would you be able to use these at all? I wouldn't recommend it. Yep. Yeah, so best always in the dry. Yep. Yep. So the yep. rain can wa will wash it away? Is that how you remove it, water? Mm -hmm. No, these are more semi-permanent. Um, mm -hmm. So it um, depends on how much traffic that it gets, what sort of surface, ground surface it is, how clean it was, etc. Um, you could expect these to last um, up to 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of traffic, you know, you might only get a month out of it, but um, you know, it should definitely last more than more than weeks, regardless of, of traffic. But um, uh, it does all depend on the, the ground surface, etc. Yeah, and do they come in, um, they obviously come in in different colours, but do they come in, in different sizes? Uh, no, these are the two sizes, 500 grams mm -hmm. and 350 grams. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, is it dangerous to like if you accidentally get it in your eye or anything like that? Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, you should always, um, if you ever do get any in your eye, um, if you don't know how to do it, how to um, take care of it, there is a phone number for the poison center on the back. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you would want to rinse with water mm -hmm. um, as your first aid um, precaution. The saline water is obviously better if you have that available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a lot of first aid kits, you will have a saline water 
to be a uh, saline solution to be able to rinse your eyes. Yeah. Yep. So you recommend storing these in a um, cool and dry place. Yep. Yep. Storage. As per the uh, instructions, these actually do have a use by date, mm -hmm. um, which many people might not be aware of. So. Um, you should always um, be aware that it's not going to last indefinitely. Um, it also says on the can to shake before use. Now, um, within most cans like these, they have a little um, stainless steel ball inside them. And when you shake it, you'll hear that. And that's to help um, mix up the uh, paint inside it because if you, you get some sort of separation where you've got you know, um, a thinner part of the paint at one at the top and thicker at the bottom or something like that, and then mm -hmm. it's not mixed well. And it's um, not going to be um, uh, the best for sticking onto the ground surface, etc. cetera. Yep. Um, to dispose these, can they just go in a normal bin? Uh, that's a good question. If it's empty, then um, it would be fine to put in uh, into the recycling. So, yeah. um, if it's still full, uh, you could possibly just check with what your regulations are in your local, uh, in your local area. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, <clears throat> uh, yep. Um, I don't, so if they did need to remove the paint, like they made yep. a mistake, yep. uh, what could they use? Do you know? So the best solution that people that are tradies that are use these sorts of paints would uh, use as a solution for, for, for getting rid of it would be just to colour match Mm -hmm. um, something to go over it. So if you had black asphalt and you put the paint down, you didn't mean it, you could put black paint back over oh, this okay. paint to get mm -hmm. rid of it. Or concrete, you would put grey paint over whatever colour you'd put down. Um, it's not going to be that easy to get rid of it. Otherwise, some people do grinding to get rid of paints, mm -hmm. but um, you could try a solvent. Um, you know, uh, it might not work, but you could try thinners or, or methylated spirits or something like that or a graffiti remover. Um, but yeah, it depends how much time and effort that you want to take and whether it's worth spending the effort to, to do it um, whichever way yeah, that, that you prefer. So, yeah. Yeah, if they needed a whole lot more of this paint and they needed to buy like a few yep. or bulk, can they get a discount for buying more? Yep. Um, so, uh, with every product on our website, uh, you do get bulk discounts. So um, those trade disc, sorry, I'll start that again. For bulk discounts, uh, you've got five to 10, 10 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 plus. Um, if you wanna know what the prices are for those quantities, you can press the button on the website that says something about um, bulk discounts on every product page. Um, if you are a trade, a tradesman that purchases these sorts of things off us regularly or other products off us regularly. Um, and if you think you qualify for trade discounts, you can apply for um, automatic trade discounts. And um, once it gets set up by our, our sales staff, um, if you go on our website and if you're logged in with your email address, it will show um, the uh, your price. And then if you pop open that table that says bulk discounts, it'll say what's the bulk discount price for, for bulk quantities. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what was the machine called again that goes with this paint here? Um, we call it a four wheel line marking machine. Yep. Um, now just be aware that it's kind of like a DIY budget sort of solution. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the best for, for, for a permanent solution. Um, yep. If you want a permanent solution, you can um, organize a, um, um, a contractor to, to do to do the line marking professionally with the larger machine using chlorinated rubber. Okay. Um, there are um, other machines that you can get to go with this. So um, there is um, a two wheel machine, which obviously is not gonna be as good as a four wheel machine uh, because you want your lines to be straight, not sort of going in, um, uh, you know, zigzag. <laughs> zigzagging <laughs> or weaving or bends or whatever. Um, <clears throat> there is a hand machine um, although I think the hand machine is more for the uh, for the spray and mark, mm. so that if you mount that in the um, in the hand machine, you don't have to bend over every time. So if you're using it all day every day, um, if you put it in the wand, you are able to have the trigger which is extended to be able to to use it on the ground um, without bending so much. Um, so they can be both used for concrete, and that one's more for like 
grass and... It says concrete, bitumen, grass, soil, timber. Yeah, it's um, just concrete, bitumen, steel and timber. As well. uh, okay, yep. yep. So, does it not say grass? No. Okay. Um, for grass, there is um, certain um, marking paints, if you want to call them that, that you can use for grass. Um, there's chalk. There's all different sorts of um, materials that we can use for different surfaces that are sold separately. Um, probably one of the final points that I would make is um, if you're not using the whole can all at once, um, the nozzle is probably going to get clogged up with dry paint. Um, so uh, if you have used the spray um, at all, then the, the, the paint will obviously potentially clog up the nozzle. What you can do is to clean out that um, paint and just leave it clean. Um, you just tip it up, up this way, spray until no more paint comes out. Obviously don't do it in an enclosed uh, environment, but if you are outside somewhere where it doesn't matter if there's um, paint being sprayed into the air, um, then uh, that will clean out the nozzle from the paint and just some of the aerosol um, gases will uh, clean it all out and just leave a clean nozzle so that you can put this back into your car or vehicle or um, toolkit or something and then um, it'll be fine for use for next time without having a clogged nozzle. So the same with this one as well if you're not using the whole can. Um, you know, it's always inverted when you're using it. Just take it out, spray, spray until the paint stops coming out and that, and that will be cleaned for the next time. Mm -hmm. um, if you do need it. Other nozzles, we used to sell the nozzles separately. I think they stopped doing that, I'm not sure. But um, perhaps you might have a nozzle in another can if you've got multiple cans that you could use if it does get block blocked up. Yeah. So that's probably about it. Um, if you um, want to buy the product, you can go to www.advancedscript.com.au. And if you like the video, you want to see more videos like this, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks, mate.